We use all kinds of words to refer to some of the tiniest creatures on our planet, from terms like bug, insect, mini beast, and invertebrate. Yet there seems to be all kinds of confusion between what title technically belongs to what kind of creature. For example, while people across the pond from myself call these ladybugs, they are not technically bugs. I mean, I'm not Americans for calling them ladybugs, but we call them ladybirds. They definitely aren't birds either. So let's look into some entomology etymology and figure out the difference between all these terms, what they actually mean, and what on earth can you even call a bug? Invertebrates is a really good term to start with in all of this, as from a scientific perspective, it's the best overarching term for these kinds of animals. This word is used for any kind of creature without a backbone or spine, physically, not like a cowardly creature, like grow a spine, literally go, boy, bugs, go, grow, go, go, grow a spine. But anyway, it comes from a Latin of their in prefix, meaning not or without, and the term vertebra, meaning a joint in the spine. All bugs slash insects slash whatever you want to call them fall into this category, such as ants, beetles and bees, and even things like snails or worms. The problem with this, however, is that it contains other creatures that we don't traditionally view as bugs in that sense. Things like jellyfish and vertebrates too, for example, we don't really view them as bugs. It's because of the wider scope of this term that we've had to find more specific terms for the kind of creatures we find in our gardens and parks. This is where the term insect comes into play. These are creatures that fall into the insector class of animals in the realm of animal classification. They are small, have six legs and three body parts. Think of ants, butterflies and bees, they're all proper insects. The word of insect itself comes directly from the shapes of their body, as it means notched body, in reference to the clearly segmented nature of their physique. The latter part of the word comes from the Latin secale, meaning to cut, while the former in part doesn't actually come from the same root as an invertebrate, but relates more to the word into. So the word collectively means to cut into, which once again relates to their body shape and how they look and how they've been cut into wedges. From this description of insects, you could presume that they are one and the same as bugs, right? Creatures like ants and bees are called bugs all the time, yet that isn't actually the case. The term bug technically belongs to a smaller group of insects, which have more defined features. What this really means is that all bugs are insects, but not all insects are bugs. Before we continue, I'd like to briefly talk about Patreon and Super Thanks. Patreon is the best way to financially support Name Explain, and donating just $1 a month gets you ad-free videos, a chance to say what names are explained, an exclusive monthly newsletter, and your name at the end of these videos. All of that can be found at patreon.com forward slash name explain, which will be linked down below. Conversely, if you want to make a one-time donation, you can leave a super thanks directly in the comments section of any of my videos here on YouTube. They help out tremendously too. Thank you. So what exactly is a bug then? Well, technically a true bug is a subcategory of insect that falls into the Hemipetera order of insects. Hemipetera simply means half wing and relates to the type of wings these creatures tend to have, which defines them as true bugs. But what seems to be a more defining feature of them is the kind of mouth they have. Instead of having mandibles or teeth that can tear and chew, these true bugs instead have straw-like mouths, which are capable of piercing and sucking things like fruit or even human flesh and other animal flesh, I guess. I don't know, just human flesh makes it sound a tad more dramatic, doesn't it? These true bugs include the likes of cicadas, aphids, and aptly named creatures like bed bugs and stink bugs. Yeah, unlike ladybugs, stink bugs are actually true bugs. What I can't quite figure out is why exactly it was this group of insects that were deemed to be the true bugs. According to the OED, the earliest use of the word bug, being used specifically for the Hemipetera family, was in 1861. Prior to this, however, the word bug existed. Its exact origins are unknown, but originally it was used to describe something scary, like a bugbear or a bugaboo. It even has relations to a boogeyman, it's all kind of connected to one another. It then got applied to small creatures as they are often seen as being scary and gross and creepy, which I totally agree with. Bugs freak me out. Having to find the images for this video wasn't a good time for me. Not at all. Bug is a word that's picked up all other kinds of meanings too, like a computer bug, or even an illness being called a bug. We even use it as a verb too. If someone is bugging you, it means they're annoying you. It's a word that's picked up all kinds of meanings, but to most people, it's the go-to word for insects of all kinds, even if they aren't true bugs. There's a few other terms I'd like to highlight quickly too, one being mini beast. 
This is a term that has popped up to refer to small creatures of all kinds, whether they be just insects or true bugs. It even includes things like arachnids and mollusks, aka spiders and snails, which aren't bugs or even insects technically, but their own thing. But still, many of us lump them in with creatures like ants and bees. They're all in a bug's life, right? Was there a snail in a bug's life? There was definitely a slug, but I can't remember if there was a snail. I don't know, <laughs> but you get the idea. What's interesting about mini beast as a term is that it doesn't include other invertebrates like jellyfish we don't traditionally see as being bugs or insects. Then we also have the term creepy crawly, which basically means the same thing as mini beast, but has a much more negative vibe to it. Like I said, I'm not really the biggest fan of insects or bugs, but I understand their importance and like just labeling them all creepy, that's, that's not particularly fair in my eyes. But if you want one term you can apply to all these little guys in your garden, maybe mini beast is the best term. But then again, you could probably just all call them bugs or insects, unless you come across some particularly disgruntled entomologist, no one is going to stop you. Are there any other strange terms for these creatures I missed out on? If so, let me know about them down below. And of course, please suggest a topic down below which we could cover in next Monday's Name Explain video. It could be about literally anything and the topic can be as niche or broad as you like. I will then choose three of those topics and place them in a poll for my patrons to vote on. Then the winner from that poll will be the topic covered in next Monday's Name Explain video. You can vote in that poll as well as enjoy many other great benefits by visiting patreon.com forward slash name explain which will be linked down below and by donating just one dollar a month. Thank you. Anyway, that's more than enough for myself, but don't forget to go follow me on Instagram where I name explain YT, and don't forget to join the Facebook page Friends of Name Explain, where you can chat with myself and many other name nerds. Okay all, take care. I'm filming this on Wednesday, I've literally just spent all day writing this video and now here it is filming. I can make all these videos in one day if you're actually that is. This is a fun video, it's about bugs, I don't like bugs so not fun to look at these pictures, but someone's got to do I presume. Anyway, it's not rambling. Should we get on with this? For example, while people across the bo bond, the nature of their physique. Oh, I itch on the back of my head. Oh, it's got little bugs crawling all over me. Oh, cicar, cicar. Comes from the Latin cicale. My God, I was just saying cicar, and then I go if I say cicare. I'm going with cicare. It sounds more posh in Latin. Hemiptera, hemiptera. Yeah, let's go hemiptera, hemiptera. Hemiptera? Hemiptera. That sounds good. These true bugs include the likes of cicadas, aphid. My god. Blur. Take care. We're done. Cool. Uh, I need to go find a picture of a spider, which is one last little punishment for me. Thank you. Bye.